consumed the chemicals and things that were there and then went in and uh, mopped up the cardboard and paper and whatnot was there. But a real contrast between those two fires because the Royster and Bear Trust were both very big fires. Uh, the, the Royster fire, because of the chemicals, there wasn't much we could do. Bear Trust, because of the size of the fire, there wasn't much we could do. We, we put a lot of water on it, we got a lot of training, but uh, it was still pretty much gone when we got down. Um, Bear Trust fire happened to be the night of my retirement party from the post office. <laughs> he kind of went out with a bang, I, I guess. <laughs> I mentioned a couple of the early firefighters. Uh, Albert Earl, who was involved with the uh, fire wardens. Uh, another fellow, John Noble. Uh, John designed and patented a hose reel. And uh, we have, you know, down in the uh, pavilion of the Historical Society, we have an old hose reel that saw service here in St. Louis. Bernard Leahy salvaged that and stored it for many years. Uh, Jerry Pulse and stored it for the sesquicentennial. <clears throat> I have tried desperately to find out if that is one of Noble's hose reels or not. There is not a mark on it to be found. And uh, we know he patented his hose reel. We don't know that he ever produced them. But I thought it would be kind of fun if we could ever identify that as a Noble's reel that uh, we would have one here in St. Louis. Uh, Another fellow that was interesting was uh, Walter Burlingame. Walter served as fire chief two different times for a total of 33 years. And for the records I've been through, that's the longest that anyone served as fire chief. But Walter served the first time in the late teens and early 20s. And he saw one of the major transitions for the fire department, and that was going from horse-drawn engines to motorized apparatus. Uh, he was chief in 1921 when we got a Bolstrom motorized fire engine. This is some information we had out for the sesquicentennial about the Bolstrom. A uh, couple interesting things. The Bolstrom fire engines were built in St. Louis by the Bolstrom Motors Company. Uh, St. Louis Fire Department bought a full 50% of the fire engines that they produced. Uh, that truck was in service here for about 30 years. They produced two fire engines, they sold one. Uh, but uh, here's some design drawings for the truck. Uh, here's a stock certificate for the Bolstrom Motor Company. And uh, several different pictures of the truck. We have uh, Fred Bennett here in this picture. Fred was a driver for many years with the fire department. He drove, as I understand it, horses and also the uh, motorized apparatus. Interesting thing is the driver because of the teams, lived on the second floor of the fire hall. And when they went to the motorized apparatus, it just kind of stayed that way. The driver lived on the second floor of the fire hall. Fred Bennett became ill and was unable to drive. And his wife, Hazel, concerned that they would not have housing because he couldn't do his job, went to the city council and asked if she could drive in his stead until he was well. So they decided, yeah, it'd be all right if Hazel drove the fire truck. So she kind of became the first woman to get on the fire department. And she drove for, from the records I've seen, around seven or eight years. And she drove the old Bolstrom. <coughs> One of the interesting stories, you know, stories are interesting. I don't know if they're true, but they're interesting. Uh, you know, ladies didn't wear trousers in those days. And, uh, one morning an alarm came in out north of town and uh, Mrs. Bennett went down, she got on Bolstrom and Walt Burlingame, his fire chief, came in and they headed north of town. It was kind of windy. <laughs> and her skirt kind of kept blowing up uh, into her lap and up around the steering wheel and she was fighting with that and driving the truck. And finally Chief Burlingame uh, made a chief's decision. He grabbed her skirt, bent over, wrapped it around her legs, and held on while she drove. <laughs> Is it true? I don't know, but it's a good story. Neither of them are here to contest it. Um, when the truck was sold in the 1950s, it went down to Horb's used car lot, which was down here on 46, next to the Meteor. Uh, sometime later on, it went down to the DeWitt and Lansing area, where it was parked in front of a business as advertising for a number of years. Um, over the last 10 years, uh, my wife and my sons and I have been trying to track that thing down, and so far we haven't got there. But uh, our son did uh, follow up on the name of Joseph Jandisak. Uh, 
Morris Bolstrom was the guy that owned Bolstrom Motors. Joseph Jandisak was a Czechoslovakian immigrant. He had trained in engineering at the University of Prague. Coming to the U.S., he found that his English was poor, and it interfered with him getting employment. Somehow he ended up in St. Louis, encountered Morris Bolstrom, and uh, went to work for him. And Joseph Jandisak basically engineered the Bolstrom fire engine. After Bolstrom Motors bellied up, uh, Jandisak eventually left the area. Our younger son was able to find his grandson and find that Joseph and his son, who also went into engineering, both went to work for Chrysler Motors and were involved in developing their first uh, automatic transmissions. Uh, sadly, uh, Joseph's son at that point was quite elderly and suffering uh, from Alzheimer's and wasn't able to give any kind of information. And his grandson, who uh, our son had talked with, really didn't know anything about the Bolstrom for the time that he was here. But if you have any pictures of the Bolstrom truck or know where it might be, I'd really like to hear from you. You have a picture just about like this down at the Historical Society, one of our older uh, pieces of apparatus. And this is probably sometime from the 1880s because the original photograph with the names on the back said this gentleman right here was Albert Lowry. And Albert Lowry was one of our early brave noble firefighters, served as fire chief for a span of time. He owned the house that Jerry and Sally Church lived in over on Pine Street for a number of years. And this just happens to be Albert Lowry's uniform hat. And I believe that dates from about the late 1880s when he was chief because the badge is number one. And on the bottom of the bill it says number one. But that was Albert Lowry's uniform hat and probably the very one he is wearing there without the badge on the front. Um, so there have been some interesting people along the way. Uh, one other interesting person I would mention would be Walter Case that probably a lot of you know or have known. Um, Walt's about 87 or 88 years old now. Uh, he still seems to think he's about 15 and he doesn't have time to get old. But uh, Walter got on the fire department in 1954 and retired from the fire department in 2004 having served 50 years. And from any records I can find, uh, no one else comes especially close to that. We've had a lot of people serve in the 30 to 40 year range, but Walter did uh, complete a full 50 years of service. And at the time of his retirement, uh, even received a letter of congratulation from the president and his wife. So uh, quite, a, quite a recognition, I think, for a lot of service he gave to the community. And I like, like relics, as I say, uh, this helmet. Who wore that, Larry? <laughs> I think I did. I think Larry did. I think uh, Bernard Leahy wore it before him, and I think Myth Peacock maybe had it before oh, Bernard did. So uh, that was the Chief's helmet for a lot of years here in St. Louis, and uh, that will end up in the, Saint, in the uh, fire department archives one of these days, but uh, I'm protecting it at home right now because that's a safer place for it. Um, there have been a lot of interesting things happen in St. Louis with the fire service. Um, a lot of times you think about the firemen don't do much until there's an alarm and they drive through town like idiots. They go out and smash things up, pour water on everything they don't smash, leave everything ruined, and then come back smelling and stinky. That's basically true. <laughs> but in the midst of all that, uh, they do do some things that are very beneficial. Um, a house fire that occurred the night before I came down and put my application in for the fire department uh, some friends had a grandchild who'd been badly injured in an automobile accident and was basically in a vegetative state. They had a major house fire. Uh, they lost much of what they had, but the firemen were able to get in and bring out some pictures of their grandson before his injury.